Okay, so this next book that we are going to be reading, I know I'm going to have some boys that are so excited because it is about baseball. I know we've read a lot of girly books and animal books, which animal books can go for girls or boys, but um, play ball is a good baseball story. And I know we have a lot of softball girls too. Um, but one thing I want you to know about this book. So it is a memoir, which means it is somebody is telling a story about, uh, make sure I tell you this right. Uh, okay, a memoir is an, is an account of a set of memories written by the person who experienced them. So this book is kind of like a biography or autobiography. The person who is experiencing these stories he's going to tell us is the one who wrote, wrote them. Um, and so they kind of write some memories of their life in the word memoir. Uh, we have the root word memory and or it has uh, memory has memoir in it. So, but something interesting about this book, it is going to be nonfiction because it does tell true fact things, but it is written where um, it will go from like one scene and one part of this guy's life to boom, to all of a sudden to the next part. And so sometimes that can be really hard to follow. So I wanted to let you know ahead of time, like it kind of jumps around in this book. Um, it doesn't really go in order of... Um, like this happened and then it follows suit. So it really jumps around in the story. So make sure you're paying attention close to that as we're reading. Um, with this book, there is going to be a pretty strong message. Like we are really going to learn something from this character or this person who wrote this memoir. So as we're reading that, I want you to really think about what can I learn from this person? Like what did they do that I could learn from them? Okay. All right, Play Ball by Jorge Posada. I can't. Yes, you can. No, I can't. Yes, get ready. Jorge crouched in the batter's box. Everything felt strange. He was batting left-handed for the first time. He squinted toward the pitcher's mound where his father waited. His father lobbed the ball. Jorge lunged awkwardly and missed again. The ball bounced to the backstop and rolled alongside four other balls that Jorge had swung at and missed. This is impossible. I can't do it, Papa, the boy called. I can't. Yes, you can. His father trotted down from the mound to home plate. He stood behind Jorge and gently curled his arms around his son. Hold the bat this way, he said, moving Jorge's hand slightly, and bend your knees a bit more. Now, I think it's pronounced Jorge, but you could say George if you wanted to um, in this instance. That I think that would be okay. Jorge's father stepped back. Jorge swung at the empty air. It feels weird, he complained. I'm good batting right-handed. Do I have to? Good isn't best. His father broke in at the same time, picking up the baseballs and heading back to the mound. It was early Saturday morning, and Jorge and his father were the only ones on the field. Jorge's father threw again, and Jorge swung and missed. On the next pitch, Jorge got a small piece of the ball. It flew upward, clinged against the crosswire top of the batting cage, and landed in the dust with a dull plop. See, his father called. You're getting the idea. It's not even in fair territory, he grumbled. Then he leaned forward one more, once more, tensed his body, and waited. What do you think it means he grumbled? If he's grumbling about doing this and grumbling about the situation, what can I conclude about how he's feeling about this? Yeah, I can tell, or I can infer, I can conclude that he's not happy about this situation. He doesn't want to learn to do this. This is not what he set out to do. Um, he's like, I'm a right hand batter and I'm fine with that. But his dad is pushing him to try something different. Splat! The hard rubber ball echoed against the concrete wall. It was Wednesday. After the long bus ride home from school, George wanted to do one thing. Play baseball. Splat, splat. When Jorge tossed the ball high off the wall, he drifted back and caught it on the fly. 
When he ripped, when it ruffled it lower, he darted left or right, scooped up the rustling grounder, resulting grounder. George, Jorge liked the pop sound when the ball went into the glove's wide, deep pocket. Why do you think the author used that automatopoeia pop sound? Like, what would be his purpose in making us understand that pop sound? Yeah, the, um, so that I can really visualize or really um, understand what it sounds like when that ball is hitting that glove, that it's coming hard. Because if it's popping, then that ball's coming fast. Hey, Jorge, Ernesto and Manuel walked into the vacant lot. The three friends were always together. Jorge's mother sometimes jokingly called them the three musketeers. Watch this, Jorge snarled a ground ball and underhanded it to Ernesto, who spun and flipped it to Manuel. Que pasa? What's up? <clears throat> Jorge walked over to where his bat lay on the ground. Here's what's up, he said. Jorge put the bat on his left shoulder. My dad wants me to start batting left-handed and right, he said with a gloom voice, to become a switch hitter. So what do we think a switch hitter might be? Right, so a switch hitter means they can go from left to right. And we know that because he said left-handed and right. Um, why do you think that would be a big deal in baseball, that he could hit from both sides of the plate? Yeah, I think it gives him a chance to hit the ball in different places and kind of confuse the other team a little bit. Do you think that would be a good quality to have as a baseball player, that you could do different things? Yeah, I think that would be good. And I think his dad knows it's good. So he's really pushing him to try to do that. Manuel gave George a, a baffled look. That doesn't make sense. You've already, you're already a good hitter. Batting Roddy? Ernesto broke in. No, it does make sense. Batting left-handed makes it easier to hit a right-handed pitcher. I guess so, Manuel admitted. Remember the big right-handed Roberto guy we played last week in the park? When he pitched sidearm, I thought the ball was coming smack at my head. Whoa, scary. But I didn't, but I didn't strike out, Jorge spoke up. Next worst thing, Manuel teased, a couple of lame taps to the pitcher. The three boys were silent. The, then Jorge grinned shyly and said, well, maybe I should practice a little left-handed. They played pepper. Ernesto and Manuel fielded and Jorge batted. His swing felt smoother. Sometimes he even made contact and sent a bouncing ball to one of his friends. Every chance he had, Jorge swung and swung. There were some dry bushes at the edge of the lawn in front of his house. There were tops. Their tops came up to George's, Jorge's waist. He crouched and swung again. He tried to just skim the tops of the bushes. He swung slowly and evenly. Then he stepped forward and swung with all of his might. He felt his wrist snap around cleanly. He spun on his heels. It felt good. More follow through, Jorge's dad called from the front porch. His father went on. Let's go to the park, and I'll hit some pop-ups. Yes, Jorge shouted. He loved roaming the infield while his father lofted high pop-ups that never seemed to want to come down. Let's go right now, after I take ten more cuts. So, let's talk about how maybe Jorge has changed a little bit and how he's feeling about hitting left-handed. His friends have convinced him a little bit that, hey, this isn't a bad thing. And now that he, he hit it just a couple times with his friends, he's starting to practice some more and some more. And so on Monday, or not Monday, we don't have school Monday, Tuesday, we're going to find out just exactly how does Jorge's left-handed batting come along.